Keys and Advance TV, and today we're gonna to be doing a move I call the ball tuck. So what's important when thinking about this move is that we're thinking about going from being expanded to being as compact as we can possibly be, and all that compactness wants to happen in one split second. So what I'm gonna do for you is show you each move individually, but then we're gonna to try to run all these moves together so we can bring our body into as small of a space as possible, which makes it easier to move around the smaller we are. So this move, you can do it standing, you can do it low, but what we're gonna to do today is actually start in a higher place and work our way down into the floor, just so you can really feel this idea of going from being expanded to compact. So we're gonna start just by sending the weight over to your left side, and we're gonna come down to the left, down to a four step to the left, keeping that right leg internally rotated. If the four star is uncomfortable for you, feel free to do flat footed, that's okay too. But you just wanna make sure your pelvis is off the floor here. So my right leg is extended. And then what I'm gonna do, think about is externally rotating this right leg. So this right leg wants to externally rotate as that left knee internally comes toward the right knee. And then I wanna push down the diagonal. So you can kinda of see my right foot is flexed here and I want to send the right leg down the diagonal so I can open some space in the hips, dropping the pelvis as I descend on the diagonal line of the image, right? So it'll look something like this. Yeah, so I'm coming down. This could be whatever's comfortable for you. Either four starts on the back left foot or on the top of the left foot, whichever is easiest for you. But I want to think about opening space in between the thighs here. So uh, the space in between the left and right thighs open. I have my left leg bent and my right leg long. I'll do this facing this direction, then I'll turn around again and do it to face the opposite way so you can see the hands. But I have my upstage right hand that's on the palm right now. And I'm gonna fold that right arm into the right forearm. And then I'm gonna roll across that right forearm so that the palm comes to face the ceiling. So I'm rolling across that right forearm. And as I roll across that right forearm, I'm gonna bring everything in toward my center. So I'm bringing the knees together, closing the space between the two thighs. I'm also bringing the tops of the thighs closer to the chest, and I'm bringing the right uh, legs close together as well. So I'm basically coming into a fetal as I roll across that right forearm. So I'm sinking into the left leg, left four starch, just keeping the pelvis up, right? Internally rotated in the right. I want to externally rotate as I connect the knees together. Still the pelvis is lifted. I want to shift down the diagonal as I open it in the thighs here. And then I want to think about this right hand, it's my upstage hand, and then the right palm goes to the right forearm, and then I want to roll across that right forearm so the palm is up toward the ceiling. And as I roll across that right forearm, I'm softening everything in toward my center, closing the space between the legs, bringing the tops of the thighs toward the stomach, curving the upper body in toward the tops of the knees there, as I come into a super compact field position on the right hand side. So this right bicep is gonna be tucked under your upper body to help keep your head from the floor, right? Because if I take out this right bicep here, then I get this drop in the upper body. So by having that right side tucked under, gives you a little bit of space between where your head is, where your neck is, and where the floor is. In order to get around, in order to fully spin around, we're gonna actually have to take all these accents simultaneously. So when we come from this shape with the knees open and apart, what we want to feel like is that as soon as this right forearm drops, right, the next actions all happen together. So that right forearm drops, and we want to think about rolling over that right forearm, connecting the knees together, connecting the legs together, folding everything in toward your chest as I soften into that right arm, and all that happens all at once. So it looks something like this. So what's going to continue to be important here is that you actually drop your head as you come around, right? So when people are first learning how to do this, sometimes they have a tendency to want to hold their neck away from the floor because they're afraid of their head hitting the floor. And that's actually what this tucked right side is for, to keep some space between your head and the floor. So when you come around, I want you to actually drop your head so your head actually descends into the floor as well. Now, there's one more little part that you have to add to all of this to make it go around the circle. So in theory, in practice too, I guess, 
when you come around, you can actually do that full circle without using an extra hand, right? You can just have this right hand and fold at the right time and into that right form and roll across to get that kind of whip around around the corner. But what's a little bit easier and what allows for even a greater rotation if you're trying to do like a 360 or a 540 or whatever you're trying to do on the right side, what also helps is a push from your left hand. So as I come to this shape, and I have the knees apart, right? I just descend it down the diagonal so I can open space between the thighs. When we drop to that right form, it helps a bit of a push from this left hand. So as we drop, I have this left hand pushing as everything folds into my center. So I wanna be compact before I push so it's easier to come around. So in slow motion, it'll look something like this. With a bit more speed to it, it'll look something like this. And that's it. So let's go back to the top and I'll work it slowly piece by piece and then we'll build some speed so we can get that kind of ball tuck and wrap around. We're going to shift over to our left side, externally rotate bring the knees together, push the pelvis down the diagonal, open in the thighs, tuck that right forearm, bring everything in, push from the left to wrap around the floor. We have left, internally rotate, push and wrap. A little bit back here again. Sink. Sink left. Twist. Open. And there you have it. That's the ball tuck. One of my personal all-time favorite moves. I have a lot of different variations on this, which we'll cover in the future. Google tutorials and classes and things like that. But this is the pure basic of it. I do recommend trying it on both sides. Just see if you're comfortable both ways. We'll see you next time.